previously on Starting Over. Chloe almost choked, which made Josie feel like a failure. I wasn't paying attention. You're not going to be there, able to watch her every minute. Iyanla continued to challenge to Wanda. That's your father, not your husband. That's none of your business, to Wanda. Summer revealed she had an affair with a married man. You had sex with him. And inadvertently hit a raw nerve with several housemates who have issues with men who cheat. I have no fears. None. He didn't play a game with her. She knew he was married. She knew. And Kim was furious when Yanla took away her makeup and expensive clothing. I'm pissed off. It doesn't matter whether you're wearing makeup or jewelry, you still feel the same way. A very important step for Kim in mending her broken relationships is removing the mask. Her makeup is a part of that mask. She pretty much failed the assignment right off the bat. I'm pissed off and I do not understand how taking my makeup, my jewelry, my clothes has anything to do with me reaching Michael. After giving Chloe a biscuit and her almost choking, it really nails me on the head to know that being a mom is a huge responsibility and it really scares me to think that I can't be there for every second of her life someday. everybody this morning. Okay. You're okay? How are you? She's spoiled rotten because of all the attention she gets, so when I walk away for two seconds, she screams bloody murder. Uh, you know what? We're gonna meet, and we're gonna talk about that. I'm glad to hear that she cries when you leave the room. Well, I am too. No, do you know why? Why? Because she misses me? Because, let me tell you something, one of the dangers and risks of her having six wonderful mothers is that she really needs to have her primary bond with you. And one of the things that happens to a baby that has so many caretakers is they start to detach a little bit from the primary bond. So I'm glad to hear that she... Well, she it's a good thing. It's a good, it is a good thing. It's not just because she's spoiled. I mean, she happens to be sort of cute, huh? Just a little bit cute, right? <laughs> just a little bit cute. Even upside down, you're cute. Anyway, Josie, okay. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. What's it been like to not have makeup, to not have your jewelry, not have your clothes, and be on television? Well, I don't understand it, you know. What do you mean? Um, I go out all the time without makeup. I go out all the time without my jewelry. So it's hard for me to sort of, you know, understand the correlation. One of the parts of you, Kim, is the part of you that likes to look nice and dress mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, and I've done and that my jewelry. whole life. Right. You know, it is a part of you. Since I was young. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's now, the true. question is whether or not it defines you as a person. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. So the exercise you think was supposed to kind of teach you what's important. I guess that, you know, relationships are important, but I already know that. And that family's important and, and you know, that, that that's all more important than the things, but I already know that. All right, but Kim, let's look at it in relationship to your goal. One of your goals, I think, is to develop more healthy relationships mm -hmm. with women. So let's talk about that. If you are a woman who presents yourself as having money, as being attractive, what role does that play in the problems that you've had in relationships? I don't know. I'm not a selfish person, and I'm not, like, stuck up, and I'm not, um, I think I'm... Arrogant or condescending? Yeah, or... yeah. You know, it's not like when I meet somebody, I'm like, I'm better than you are. You know, I don't ever but Kim, pull that off. Okay, so here's what happens. When I listen to you, it sounds like you're a really good person, a really nice person, a really giving person. I think so, yeah. So why these problems with women in particular? So what are your roommates like? Well, they're pretty fun. I've got Josie, who has a six-month-old baby. Cool. And then um, to Wanda, who is um, Tony Braxton's sister. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And let's see, we've got Kim, who's my roommate. She has issues with other women, so of course I would be her roommate because I'm the friendliest person on the face of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. But, um, yeah, and then Jennifer, is she's 22, and 
Snay is like. She woke up in December one day and just legally blind. Blind? Yeah, just woke up. Well, you got cool roommates, it sounds like. I do. I mean, we had some makeups yesterday because it seemed like, you know me, like I don't really think before I speak and I laugh at everything and I'm, you know, whatever. And so I managed to upset um, Kim, Josie, and oh, Tawanda. Well, I don't even know why I upset Tawanda. I really don't. Um, You're the new girl. I'm the new girl, and apparently yeah. she said she just thinks that I, a lot of the stuff that I say, I, I don't need to say. Like, I, yeah. I need to, it's just not necessary. Yeah. And then, um, but I don't know what that means. Remember her? I do remember her. Yeah, so what did, what did you come up with, with, did you do some work with these things? I sat and I looked at everyone that was in the family. And I saw that, um, yeah, I have a lot of issues. So, I have um, a resource for you. Remember your personality test? Yes. Did you read that? Yes. How was it for you? It was very interesting. Several days ago, Tawanda took an Enneagram test. The Enneagram is an opportunity for Tawanda to understand the real inner workings of her heart and her mind. Tells her about her personality. Well, today I want you to meet with someone who's a, a specialty in the Enneagram test. Okay. To help you go through those things and really understand how that plays out in your life and how these things are a part of your personality. May I speak to Tawanda? Wow. Can I tell her who's calling? Yes, her husband. You guys are just psychic, I swear. It's him. Hey. Huh? Hey. What's up, man? I am going to today tell Yama exactly how I feel. About what? Thought About... you've been telling that the whole time? Yeah, but I was sugarcoating it. I, you know, I wasn't sure on how she would accept it. I didn't trust that she would be able to accept the things or the honest things that I felt. Like what? So because her tactics, she's mean. She's mean? She's mean and rude to me. Well, tell her that she is. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to tell her that. I'm like a salesman. I try to sell what I want so that everybody will go my way instead of this way. Okay, so you manipulate. Josie has to grieve the loss of being the perfect mother. Josie can't be the perfect mother. And being the perfect mother isn't what Chloe would want or really what Josie would want. I want Josie to be a human mother, a real mother, a loving mother, not perfect. Hey, Josie. Hey. Hi. Welcome to Creative Leap. Wow. Today is your day with Chloe. So I want you to support Chloe today and support yourself. Yeah, support yourself. I want you to talk to mothers and find out their number one rule for motherhood. Josie needs to find out what other mothers think, how they raise their children. Josie needs input. She needs to feel that she belongs to a community of mothers. What are you thinking or feeling? Um, a little scared, but I'll do it. I'm right here in case you're nervous. Okay. Hi. hi Say hi. See the baby? How old is she? She's six months. Oh, wow. <gasps> how old he? He's four months. Four months. Yeah. Wow. Hi there. I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think would be your number one rule for motherhood? Be flexible and just enjoy the time that you have with them. My rule is to listen to what their wants are, but to be there for them and to support them in whatever way that I can. Constant. Constant interaction with my kids. I mean, they're always here with me. Consistency. Consistency. Well, with him, it's patience. Patience. I like that one. Unconditional love. Uh, go with the flow. Go with the flow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I want you to do is, is we are going to come up with the 10 keys of motherhood. Okay. I'm asking Josie to create the 10 keys of motherhood, the things that she can count on herself for, the things she can rely on. So when she doesn't know what to do with Chloe, when she's afraid, she can look to these rules for guidance. At 7 o'clock tonight, I want you to create a ritual or a ceremony or something in order to dedicate these rules to Chloe. I want you to get all your housemates to support you. I want to get you to give them tasks or, or whether they're just there to support you. And I want you to create something with Chloe in mind. 
to kind of validate or affirm or honor your commitment to these 10 rules, 10 keys of motherhood. Okay? Okay. You also might want to ask Kim what she thinks a great mother, you know, what one of her rules of motherhood is. You might or might not. What's your thought? What's that look for? What's the look um, for? I don't know. I'm kind of angry with her right now. Oh, what's going on? Well, because I just don't like how she's not understanding her assignments and she's not applying herself fully to them. I'm not too excited about having to ask Kim what her key of parenthood or being a mother is due to the fact that um, Kim and I really just aren't communicating with each other. And not only that, Kim has a lot of her own issues and assignments right now that I think she should focus on more. So she's resisting? Yes. For instance, like last night when we did our belly dancing thing, mm -hmm. she went and changed her clothes. She instantly went and put on glitzy, glammy pajamas, and I seriously made it look like she put makeup on too. So um, yeah, I'm just a little angry and upset with her. When people meet you, mm -hmm. what do you think their first impression of you is? I, I was shocked to find out, not through this exercise, but the one previous to this, um, that the thing that I emit most from people, no matter how I dress, is sadness. So let's talk first about sadness. Well, I think I do have a lot of sadness. I think that I've never been happy. But the sadness is, you know, it's just... Life didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Really? Besides these um, broken relationships with women. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a lot. Your life is not well, the way you'd like it to be? No. They look at you and think you have everything. Mm -hmm. Often those are people who don't have what you have. In other words, they don't have the nice house, nice car, maybe even the husband. Mm -hmm. If you portray yourself sort of one-dimensionally, in other words, if you don't let them into that sadness, if you don't let them into your insecurity, if you don't let them into the normal human condition, then you do look like Miss Perfect. And what do people want to do with Miss Perfect? Reject her, ridicule mm -hmm. her, sometimes emulate. You don't show them the human side of you. Well, I thought I did. I well, this is what not. you're telling me. People here yeah. at the house are saying, Sad well, they see that anger. more, yes. I think, than the other part. Even though I tell them, I mean, they know that I'm divorced. They know about my father. They know about that I'm estranged from really? my sister. Oh, yes. Do you think they really know that you two have pain? That you two don't feel confident always? That you two have lapses of judgment? That you two, at times, get depressed and anxious? Well, see, I thought I did, but okay. I guess not. I don't know. You may have. Hi, Tawanda. Hi. I'm class Hi, Tawanda. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Come on in. Hey. An Enneagram test is a questionnaire to help you discover your personality type and to help you ask some questions about yourself that you may not necessarily have asked yourself before. Now, I have your test results here as well. And uh, like you said, you're a three, which is called the achiever. Okay. And the basic fear of the three is of being worthless. And so what the three will do is that it will look to the people around them, their parents, their family, and see what do they appreciate? What do they value? Aha, uh -huh, they like that. I'm going to be the best at that. And what happens is that the three loses the self of the self okay. because yeah. then you're going on trying to be this thing that others will appreciate instead of being you the expert telling me he's a number three allowed me to be that much more comfortable with him one of the questions that I'm asking is how did you become so calm I would love to be that calm because now when I try to express myself it almost comes off as so much anger. At age 24, I found, well, my family found out that my father had an extracurricular activity with another woman for 12 years. Right. So when, when I found that out, that really put me in a different mode. I really became a loner. I really suppressed all of my feelings. I never told my father exactly how I felt about the entire situation. And it's been ongoing. Right. And have you maintained your relationship with your father? Um, I just started speaking to him again. Right. And that's been, that was 20, that's when I was 24, I'm 30 now. And I want to tell him exactly how I feel, but I don't want to hurt his feelings. But, uh, 
Don't you think that he is old enough to handle his own feelings? He may be. Isn't it more important that you mm. focus on your own feelings? Yeah, it is more important. Yeah. But I've been this way for so long. It's just kind of hard. It has been. It has been difficult. Of course. This is me. These are. This is my stuff. All right. Yeah. It's pretty hard to live with. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I feel like a failure. A pleaser. An outcast. Like I said, I'm very angry. Right. A lot but I keep it inside. My advice to you would be to start letting go of that and focus on what are you really feeling yourself and knowing that your feelings are worthwhile, they're real, they're there, that you may not be used to checking in with them as much as right. you would like to, right? After meeting with Klaus, I am really feeling the confidence to express my feelings and my thoughts with Ianma. Did you take the test? I took it already. What, what, are you allowed to tell us what you are? Yes, I'm a three. I'm, I'm the achiever. So he was calm. Anger's a good, calm. anger's a good feeling. Anger's and what a good else? feeling, he said, because, you know, you have, that's, that means that it's coming out. That means that you're not happy with what's going on inside you. So anger is good. So the yeah. achiever can become an inspiring example of excellence and authenticity or blindly pursue success and status. Hmm. We've got a hot topic in group today. It's control. The women in a starting over house must realize that in order to grow, they must give up control, something they seem to have a real hard time doing. So how we doing, ladies? How we living today? Good. Good? I wanted to just do a little um, follow-up with you today, Miss Kim, because yesterday was a rough day. everybody else in the room got it. I got a, a lot of the roughness. Thinking back, do you have any awarenesses about why your initial action was so violent? Well, I think that I had a lot of little things building up that I was upset about, and instead of really releasing him or talking about him, um, you know, I, that's usually what I tend to do. Then one other thing happens, and then that's when I go off. So what's the so, awareness? Well, just that I need to take care of one thing at a time instead of letting everything build up. Mm -hmm. And I want to apologize to you because I was probably didn't act the best, and I don't feel very good about myself that I acted like that. And I apologized to everybody in the house and, you know, told them that, you know, I probably shouldn't have acted like that, that I was, you know, in a bad mood all day. And, and they were all very supportive and understood, and everybody took their jewelry off and tried to support me, so it was very nice. What I would ask you for is just honor and respect. What we want to work towards is appropriate ways to honor what's going on, to deal with what we're feeling. Which brings me to our topic for the day. What is the issue with control? Control is preached to everybody. Like, everybody thinks that control is the main thing of life. Like, everybody has to have control. Okay, talk to me about you and your life. How do you control what's going on in your life? Like a bank to let me be able to open an account with them and me snapping because it doesn't work right. So you snap. When things aren't going your way, you get snappy. Yeah, I get mad. You get snappy. I'm, I'm looking for the behavior. So what you do is you snap. You Pretty much. Yeah, I, yeah, I can. Okay. okay, what do you do, Tawanda? I shut down. Okay, so you withdraw mm -hmm. and withhold. Okay, what do you do, Summer? I'm like a salesman. I try to sell what I want so that everybody will go my way instead of this way. Okay, so you manipulate. Mm -hmm. What do you do, Kim? I blow. Yeah. I, I call it flipping out. Right. Okay. But you, you and then it. I also withdraw. Okay. And ignore. Okay. So you blow up, 
ignore, with, withdraw. Yeah, because I had to call you on that yesterday. And, and you honored that. <laughs> so would you be willing, and do you trust each other enough to call one another? Can you receive it? I do, and I'm the newest one. Yes, however, to me, it's not about the trust thing. It's about feeling that you're going to hurt the next person's feelings. Tawanda is obviously having a hard time with me and my affair. I am so bad at conflict, but I am so not willing to live in a house with somebody who isn't going to speak to me. You want to control how somebody else's feels, so you don't say what honors you to control their feelings. So is it controlling when you don't want to hurt their feelings? Yes, because you're assuming that they can't handle what you're going to say. If I'm your sister, brother, mother, lover, husband, friend, and I know, boy, if I say this to her, she's going to freak out, she's going to break plates, I'm not going to say it to you. Right. So right. in, in your way of setting it up and your behavior, you're controlling, A, how much information you receive, who you receive the information from, and what happens to you. It's, it's a control mechanism. Do you six ladies here in this process together trust each other enough to tell each other the truth? That's my question. Kim, tell the truth. It's okay. Yes. You do? Okay. Sine? Mm hmm Summer? Okay. Jennifer? I trust enough to receive the truth. Uh-huh. But I'm afraid of their reaction when I tell the truth. Do you trust everybody yes. in here enough? And, and you, Josie? I don't trust the feedback I get from everyone, but I trust that I tell everyone the truth. Oh, so you really are in control, big time. I don't see how that's control. I don't know everyone well enough here to base what I tell them off of their feelings. I'll speak from my heart, but I don't know if that's what I can get in return. If you're speaking from your heart, why would you accept any, expect anything less from everybody else's? I don't expect anything less. I just... You just not, put it on the floor. You just said, I don't trust. When you hear one thing and they tell you one, and then when you walk away and you hear something else, that makes me distrust you, but I'm being fully honest to you. Okay, so we got a little, uh, we have a little undercurrent going on here. Is that, is, would that be accurate? Because if I'm standing in one room and you tell me one thing and as soon as I turn my back, I hear you say another, and it's basically con contradicting what you said to me, I'm not going to trust anything else that comes out of your mouth. Because you're saying whatever fits whoever you're telling it to. Who are the two people that you trust more in this room than anybody else? Should I trust more? T. T. <laughs> And the one you trust the least? Kim. Kim. Okay, I have some more stuff to say. Okay, good, good. Tell me. I just have to get this off my chest. Okay. You can be really harsh and mean. So how does it make you feel when you hear five women in this room say that they trust you, but you just said you don't trust them. I don't think they're being true to themselves. I don't think some people are answering honestly. Okay. Now, you see, you just said that, right? You don't know if that hurt somebody's feelings, but you did share it. Do you get that? Because that was honest for you, not trying to control the reaction or the response. Just share what you feel honestly. That may have hurt somebody's feelings. No, that's not my intention. Okay, good. My intention is for everyone to be truthful to me like I am to them. Good. I'm glad you just had that practice of sharing what you feel honestly without worrying about anybody else's feelings. Hi. Hi, Josie. How are you? You ready? Yep. Yeah? You feeling good? Yep. Okay, so how are things going? Good. I had an assignment this morning. I went to Creative Leap, and one of the things I had to do was to ask the parents their, their number one rule of motherhood was. Hmm. So now, what do you have there? I had to write my top ten keys of parenthood, like the ones that I liked the most. These are all wonderful kind of keys to good parenting. Mm-hmm. What are you afraid of in terms of being able to be this kind of parent? The one who has all these keys. What's going to impact you 
and your ability to do this with, with Chloe. I'll give you an example, because you look puzzled, okay? Yeah, I don't get Let's it. Let's say you hook up with a guy who isn't a good parent, step-parent. That could be a threat to Chloe, right? Well, yeah, but I don't even, I don't even see myself dating. Well, someday. What does that mean? You're saying it. I'm not. Well, what is it? Okay, so tell me the other... What do you see yourself doing? I probably won't ever date again. I'll probably just be me and Chloe. Okay. Now, is that what you want, or is that what you think life has in store for you? Um, it's pretty much what I want, and that's what I think will happen, because I already know what's happened when I have had boyfriends in my life, and I tend to lose my self-esteem, and I tend to let them control the situation, but I have someone else to look out for right mm -hmm. now, and I can't be so self-centered. But you're not that person anymore. You've been transformed by virtue of a number of things, by being the starting over house well, and having a daughter. Well, then I guess I'm scared that it could happen. So I'm just not putting myself in that situation. There are men out there who actually would fall in love with you and actually would fall in love with your daughter and be good step-parents. You know, your destiny is not to be alone with Chloe if you don't want it to be. You have other choices. What do you think? But right now, I'm not too open and inviting to anybody to come in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe you're not ready to do that you haven't resolved Chloe's father as an issue in your life. No. I wonder, Josie, if you're not open to new relationships because you are hoping on some level that Chloe's father will somehow come back into your life. Well, not just come back into mine, but hers, and I just don't think it's fair to me to try to replace him, not give him a chance. Does he have all the keys? No, not really. Has he spent any time with her? He was, he's seen her twice, and it was forced upon him. He's never held her, and he's just done that. And okay. that's it. Okay. So one of the things that you were saying is, you know, I don't know really, you know, if I want him back in, in my life, in Chloe's life. And, and you know what? It's okay not to know that. It really is. I just wanted to give you the, the option of not feeling like you have to be alone with Chloe the rest of your life. The happier you are, the happier Chloe will be. Children really reflect their parents' moods. Happy parents produce happy kids. I find that interesting. Children are all different, parents yes. are different, and you're constantly learning. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll see you later. Okay. I am going to, today, tell Young exactly how I feel. She reminds me too much of my mother. So you don't like her? It's not that. She just, she's mean. I don't like that. Have no right. She's here. She's have here. Have so I'm happy to be there. We'll just hold her here. We'll work with her. So how was your meeting? How, what you learned? It was great. Really? Mm -hmm. I see you I got really, the book. Yes. So what did you I say? I really liked him. He's very calm. He said that I need to claim it. Claim your space. Mm -hmm. Claim your space. He said that it's good for me to be angry, because angry is a feeling, and that means that I know that what's gone in the inside isn't right. Yeah, it is good to be angry. Right. Tell me which ones you are ready to get rid of. I'm ready to get rid of the wrong one. The wrong one. If you've been the wrong one, what are you choosing to be instead of wrong? I'm choosing to be open. Okay. What other one are you ready to get rid of? Failure. All right. Tell me what it is you're ready to accept now. Change. Change. Good. What would you replace an outcast with? Unique. That's perfect. <laughs> so can we change that anger to passion? Yes. Sad. Joy. Yes. This is what I've learned. The mind will work to hold on to limitations. The heart is a little more cooperative. So if you can move from your heart little by little by little, you, you probably get a lot more done than if you try to do it from your head. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, darling. Have a nice, nice evening. OK, I have some more stuff to say. OK, good, good. Tell me. I just have to get this off my chest. OK. This is a part of me growing. Okay. This, it may come out yucky. OK, that's OK. Or harsh. OK. That pisses then me off. Then tonight, I have to do a ritual that everybody has to 
uh, somehow participate in or just stand and watch around. Do you mind cool. if I dress casual? <laughs> I, I, would, I would love to dress up for you, but can I wear my pajamas? You're supposed to stay in your own um, world. world. <laughs> <laughs> Never been to a ritual. I'm looking forward to it. It's just like a giving thanks, pretty much. I just have to get this off my chest. Okay. I think that sometimes you can be really harsh and mean. I don't know if that's your tactic, but sometimes I need a little more compassion, or I feel that you don't have a lot of empathy. Mm. That's just my thoughts. Okay. And that I'm never right about nothing. In that way, it's, it, that's why it's so hard for me to trust the whole process. Why? Because I feel that there's no empathy, that, you know, there's no... Sometimes I don't feel the sincerity. When I got here, I had to talk about the affair that I had and with my best friend or whatever that, oh, that yeah. you know, that's like my black mark. But, you know, and I told him that. I mean, this is the thing I'm the least proud of. It's my one regret. But... I don't really know what you're talking about with this affair thing. Well, I didn't tell you. Oh. Uh, you don't know about it. Well, I just okay. I had a really good friend and we were stupid one night and he was married, so... Uh, and then that was the same one that passed away right before my birthday, so. So let me, um, let me give that back and then we'll deal with point by point. Okay. Okay. So I heard you say that your experience is that I can be harsh and mean. Mm -hmm. And that you don't feel the empathy mm -hmm. there. And also, you're never right about anything. Okay. Did I get it all? The sincerity. I felt that there was no sincerity, no sincerity, and that's what's holding me from trusting. So it's my responsibility. No, no. I said that's what's holding me. It's from holding trusting. me from trusting. Because you don't see, sense, feel my sincerity? Mm -hmm. Okay. The energy of sincerity. Okay. Like, you didn't say, feel it. I didn't feel that. I'm not saying that you didn't give it. That's mm -hmm. just how I felt. Mm -hmm. I'm just expressing how I'm feeling since this is another step for me. No, no. I do you hear me too? Okay, I, no, I don't. Okay. And that's another thing. I also feel that sometimes I'm being, at the, the words that I'm saying, feel that I'm being challenged with it. And the problem with that is? I don't like being challenged. That's a form of control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, So the whole thing is, you had I want to control me. your feelings. I want to control you. I want to control your empathy, your sympathy, your sincerity, everything. Wow, see, I didn't even have to say nothing. Thank you, Tawanda. Okay, you're Thank you, Boo Boo. You're welcome. I just had to get it out. But, but do you get that? I do get it. Can we set up an agreement? Yes. Okay, first of all, that's twice today that you stepped out the box. Thank you. <laughs> and said it Thank and you. did it and moved uh, it. Yeah, that's who. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, yeah. In our relationship, I'm making you the offer to tell me the absolute truth at all times. Okay. I don't care what it is, Tawanda, about what you think, what you feel, what you saw. Is that an offer that you can accept? Oh, yeah, I can. Would you make me that same yes, offer? Yes, I offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I offer yeah. that to you. Yeah, yeah. Please be completely honest and, with me. And even if you think I'm mean and harsh even and if I think you're being and unsympathetic. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, let's just put it out there. Yeah, yeah, okay. But you said it. That's, you know, trust me, I don't take any of this personally. I'm going to stand for you when you can't stand for yourself. I promise you that, Tawanda. Girl, we're going to kick butt. Yeah, I'm excited now that I got that off my chest. Anytime. OK. OK. Shake on it. The things that I've expressed to Iyanla, honestly, about how I'm feeling, I felt this way since day one. And I've held it and held it and held it. Now I am able to exhale and we can actually move on. And that's exciting. Thank you, Tawanda. I really acknowledge you for your work today. Thanks. I appreciate it. I really you appreciate see? it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. comfortable today. Okay, good. Yeah, you are. But you know what? More than comfortable, you got joy in your face. Do I? Yeah. Good. Go ahead. I, I do have a big booty. Oh, girl, I show your booty, both your eyes can't take uh -uh. it. Uh-uh. I have a taste touch. <laughs> Have a good one, sweetie. Okay. Bye-bye. Now 
I'm going to express my keys of motherhood to the women in the house through a ceremony tonight. I'm getting candles. They represent the light that is in my life, which is the people I'm living with right now who are actually big influences on my daughter and myself. All right, guys. Inhale your lavender and get in the mirror. We are all down at the pool, and Josie is lighting a candle for all of us, telling us the keys to motherhood. Unconditional love, consistency, discipline, fun, um, flexibility, patience, understanding, compassion. She's also telling us that, in a way, we're all Chloe's mom. Every one of you is like a candle, and you all mean something to me. And you all have your different things that make you a unique surrogate mother to my daughter, Chloe. I feel honored that Josie is willing to share her daughter and her daughter's first experiences with me. All she has to do is smile, and it helps make your day. Sometimes just holding her makes all the other issues go away. When she's waking up, I feel as if she's my child, and I have to get up and get the things that she needs. And I really feel that I'm her second mother. This whole thing was for me to show you guys, like, my um, motherhood, and I think it all relates to all of you guys, because you guys are pretty much surrogate mothers for Chloe, and um, I respect all of you guys in that manner. So, that's it. Okay. Yay! Woo! Woo Bye. Bye. Wasn't that beautiful? Short and sweet. What? Don't be mad, Kim, because I'm, I'm not... I don't want you to think that there's... I have anything against you. And the one you trust the least. Kim. But just know that I it completely, was me. Space, I mean, I completely. It was me about being that. honest, and it was really hard to say it because I didn't want you. Oh. I didn't want to hurt your feelings in group because yeah. I do care about you a lot, and I think you're a great person, and I love all the things you do for me and Chloe. So I don't want you to think that me saying that jeopardizes my friendship with you and how I feel about you as a friend. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Let's begin. Summer. Me? Come into the love seat, please. Okay. Uh, right here. So I want to tell you that I thought it was very courageous of you to share your story uh, last week when you entered the starting over house about your infidelity. And I don't know, after a lot of alcohol, we started playing um, Truth or Dare. Mm -hmm. what, one of the things they dared us to do is go into the other room for like five minutes or whatever and make out. Did you have sex Don't with your? We you had sex with See, that's it. That's you a simple you sentence. You I met you with him. You had an affair yeah. with a married yeah. man. With a married man. And I just wanted to know what the women really thought of that. You know, she confessed something that most of us would keep secret. You know, we would not be proud of it, which she said she wasn't. So I want to find out, ladies, what you thought of Summer and her behavior that she named when she shared with us her infidelity. I didn't feel like it was my place to judge you based on what you had done. Um, here I've learned that everyone makes mistakes and it's definitely not my place to look at you differently based on the choice that you made. Mine's not that. When I first met you, my first observation when you said that was, is, oh, well, that's one of those girls that's burned me before. Because even though it wasn't, I've not ever been married, but all my boyfriends have cheated on me with someone else that happens to sometimes be my best friend. But then the more I've talked to you, the more I've met you, actually, I've actually kind of that's been forgotten. I think the thing that went through my mind is when you made that statement that you should have gotten up and you should have left, and why didn't you? I mean, I, I can look back now, hindsight is very easy. And then that's the thing that I... <laughs> it's knowing that I had that moment. And I could have made the right choice, and I didn't. I mean, that's, that's what torments me, I think, more than... <laughs> Knowing anything else that happened, it's just knowing that I had that option. You know, I really did, and I, I didn't take it, and I don't, I can't explain it. 
How did you feel about it, Tawanda? I mean, I know what you're saying is you want to know why. Why didn't she go? But what did you feel about her when she said it? Um, that she's no different from my father's wife. I think it's a huge difference when you know that someone's married opposed to not knowing when someone's married. And yes, it was his fault as well because he could have walked out that door just as, just as Summer could have walked out the door. However, me knowing Summer and me not knowing him and hearing the statement of, I should have, I could have, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. What does it bring up in you? Anger. Anger. So I'm going to give Summer something to really represent her activity. Has anyone ever heard of the Scarlet Letter? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. So Summer... It's tough. ...gets to wear an A for adulteress. Summer confronts her pain. I'm actually really shocked. I'm here to get past it. Branding it onto me is not going to do that. I'm never going to live it down. Tawanda receives a big surprise. I got you a producer and a keyboardist that are going to take that hook and lay it down. As much as I want to do it, I'm not sure if I deserve this opportunity. And Sine's frustration hits an all-time high. I can't see. It sucks not to be able to see things.